So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the problem solving skills that are needed in order to um, complete this lab. The first thing, in order to do this, you need to at least know a couple of the compounds and you know four of them based on their colors. Number one, 10, 11, and two, you know their identity based on the color that their solution is before you even add them to another compound. And for number six, you know it's ammonium hydroxide because it has an extremely strong odor and we therefore needed to put it into the fume hood. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I'm gonna start off with number one. And I'm gonna look at how number one reacts with all of these in order to help to eliminate, I'm eliminating simply, options for number three. So for example, if you look at your data table for what you collected during the lab, number one and number three should not have formed a precipitate. There was no precipitate there, which means any of these compounds that would form a precipitate with potassium chromate cannot be number three. So you can just do this in your head. You don't need to write out the net ionic equation. You just need to remember your solubility rules. So potassium is gonna combine with chlorine and those are soluble. So that's not gonna form a precipitate. So I'm good in that sense. But then aluminum and chromate are gonna form a precipitate. And since there is a solid being formed, which I did not see when I combined number one with number three, there is no way number three could be aluminum chloride. So I now have eliminated one of the options that number three could have been. For sodium carbonate, sodium with chromate, that would be soluble, so I wouldn't say anything, and carbonate with potassium, that is also soluble. And so this is still a runner, sodium carbonate is still in the run for number three. For hydrochloric acid, hydrogen with chromate is soluble, Potassium with chlorine is soluble, so hydrochloric acid is still in the running. Silver nitrate, silver with chromate would be insoluble, which means that it would form a precipitate, which means it's no longer an option. Remember, chromate acts kind of like carbonate and is normally insoluble, except for a couple of exceptions. Um, lead nitrate, again, lead with chromate would be insoluble, which means that would not be an option as well. Sodium acetate, however, sodium with chromate would be soluble and acetate with potassium would be soluble. Therefore, no precipitate is going to form and so sodium acetate is still in the running. Finally, sodium hydroxide, sodium with chromate is soluble, potassium with hydroxide is soluble. So now I only have four options left for my number three. So what you can do is you can move on to number four and say, all right, number four with let's say for example, um, potassium chromate. Or what you could do is you could continue on with number three. So let's say for example, number three reacting with um, number 10. So if you look at number three and number 10, number three and number 10, there was a brown, brown precipitate, okay? Which means if I look at these now and there is no precipitate, that means that reaction, that num the number three is not whichever compound I'm testing for. So for example, sodium carbonate. Sodium with sulfate would not form a precipitate, but copper with carbonate would. So sodium carbonate is still in the running. Hydrochloric acid with copper sulfate. Well, copper with chlorine would be soluble. Hydrogen with sulfate would be soluble, which means there's no way number three could be HCl because I need a precipitate. Same thing with sodium, ac sodium ac acetate. Sodium with sulfate would be soluble. Copper with acetate would be soluble. Therefore, no precipitate, so there's no way it could be that. And then finally, with sodium and hydroxide, Copper and hydroxide would be insoluble, so there's still an option that it could be sodium hydroxide. So now what I've done is I've gone from, what, six, seven different options for number three to just two. So what I would recommend now is now go on to number four. So let's say, for example, I look at number four with number one. So if you look at number four with number one, I saw no precipitate. And so what I would do is I would run through all of these and see which would not form a precipitate with number one. Same thing with five. If I went on and looked at number five with number one, 
I saw a rusty precipitate, which means all of these with number one, all of these compounds that I see should form a precipitate with number one. And if they don't, there is no way that they could be number five. So eventually, as you work through these, you'll have a bunch of X's and eventually you'll be able to say, well, this one is, for example, number three is sodium carbonate or number three is sodium hydroxide. And then it's a process of elimination. Okay.